going to continue with our evaluation of different macro and close-up lenses. I'll start out with the Micro Nikkor 105 f2.8 VR lens, uh, the cla one of the classic macro lenses. This is the latest version of it. Um, as mentioned, this is the current version of the classic Nikon 105 Micro Nikkor, but it's considerably bulkier and heavier and more expensive uh, than finding yourself an earlier model off eBay. I would suggest if you're trying to save money, stick with the earlier models since, believe it or not, the experts tell me they are sharper, at least for very close work. Now, there's one and only one reason that I, I absolutely insist on owning this lens, and that's for handheld chase the butterfly photography because of the autofocus in macro. Most of the macro work that we do, or that I do, is always manual focus, except that in this case, when live, fast-moving mo subjects like wasps, hornets, butterflies, um, I mean, most of the time I'm on a tripod, but for some subjects I need to sneak up on them and follow their movements. The addition of the VR in this version actually seems to work quite well. So it makes it the very best lens for this kind of job. And I actually use this lens a lot. So I recommend it. And in that sense, I recommend it over the much less expensive older versions that are just everywhere on eBay. The VR105 lens is also relatively fast. And it goes directly to one-to-one -one reproduction ratio without the addition of extension tubes or close-up lenses. This alone is unusual and it's a big plus. In fact, if I sit down and if I add up all of the qualities needed for a good macro lens, the Nikon 105 VR is always near the top because it's, it's fast, it goes one to one, it focuses close, it has nine blades for good bokeh, and it has a reasonable focus throw of 270 degrees. Not really great but passable. Um, now all of these added together suggest that this might be, if you're on a budget, this might be the best all-around macro lens for beginners. Now this lens is a little heavy. It could be sharper, but if you're a beginning macro user and you can only buy one lens, I, I can't I mean, I have to recommend this lens. I mean, this is just like the one lens that you could get that has almost everything you need. No, it's not apochromatic and a few other things. It doesn't have a really long focus throw, but all in all, it's right up there as a, one of the most useful workhorse lenses that you could possibly get. The Micro Nikkor 70 millimeter to 180 millimeter AF F 4.5 to 5.6 D uh, macro lens, a zoom lens, maybe the only zoom macro lens. Now the 7180 micro Nikkor is a great idea. It's a macro lens that zooms. I use this lens almost exclusively for almost two years, so I really know it inside and out. And it's nice to have the zoom and to be able to pull out or focus in to adjust a shot without having to move the tripod. I mean, all this is good. However, I, I don't find myself doing a lot of macro or close-up work at 70 millimeters. Uh, but most of all, most of my work is done at the other end of the focus range, maybe around uh, 125 to 180 millimeters. And then uh, the sad part of this lens is that, that it's, you know, it's widest aperture is 5.6, which simply put is too damn dim for my eyes in the viewfinder. I like the early morning light, you know, just around dawn, or I like the twilight, or I shoot mostly in shadows and darker places, hardly ever in the bright sun. So there's just not enough light for these old eyes to focus with this lens. I just can't see, especially if I want to stack photos. The viewfinder at f5.6 is just not good enough except in bright light, so why bother? I will say that there is a magic with this lens that I do love. 
Somehow the images have almost a film quality look to them, cinema, and I like that. And the lens is sharp enough, but not tack sharp. And the resulting photos tend to be, for me, just not as useful as some of the other lenses. You know, and it weighs almost two pounds. If you work in bright light a lot, you might consider this lens. Otherwise, you're better off to go with a lens that will go to one-to-one -one and is faster, something like the Micro Nikkor 105 millimeter macro lens. The legendary Micro Nikkor 200 millimeter AF F4 EDIF macro lens. This could be Nikon's sharpest macro lens, but it's also its heaviest, like over two pounds. So it really can only be used effectively on a solid tripod. The lens is well built, very sharp, and the focus throw is a healthy 300 degrees, which is good enough for focus stacking. My only complaint is that the F4 wide aperture, it kind of dims my viewfinder too much for really low light work. And you know, and as mentioned, it's heavy. Now, according to Canon users, this micro Nikkor 200 millimeter lens bests even the classic Canon 180 degree f3.5 L USM lens. I don't know because I don't have Canon. And this lens can also be used for normal landscape photography, as can any macro lens. Not all macro lenses, sharp macro lenses, are also sharp for distance, sh distance shots, but this lens is. So it has kind of a dual purpose, macro and landscape. This is an autofocus lens, but it's quite slow. And no good macro shooter I've ever met uses autofocus for anything but fast moving bug shots, so it's not a big point. Now this lens has internal focusing, so there is no change in the lens length while focusing. And it has a tripod collar, which is great, that focuses 90 degrees, so you can switch from horizontal to vertical or back in a moment. And this is a real plus. However, the lens does not get to one-to-one, -to -one, but it is as sharp as you could want. It's a classic. It is one of my favorite macro lenses, except that I've got the Voigtlander 125, so that I seldom get to use it. One problem is that the lens collar that comes with this lens is weak and can easily be broken. So I use a lens collar from Kirk Enterprises, part number NC-300, which avoids the problem. So in summary, this lens is very sharp, very sharp. It gets to one-to-one. -to -one. It has a good focus throw, 300 degrees, not bad. You can get down to 10 inches. Uh, it has nine aperture blades and a rotating collar. The bad parts are it's a, it's a slow lens, F4. It's just a little slow, it's heavy, and the bokeh, you know, the nice blurry effect is not so great. Now this next lens may puzzle you. Why would I want to talk about the Nikon Nikkor 300 millimeter AFS F4 EDIF lens? Um, well, this very sharp telephoto lens is here for one and only one purpose, and that's for use with cameras like the D3X or the D800, or D800E, because it has a close focus distance of four feet, almost a little under five feet. And so if you attach this 300 millimeter lens onto one of these high pixel cameras, you can pick off frogs in the middle of a pond, and because the resulting photo has so many me megapixels, you can crop out that frog from the center of the image and still have enough pixels left to make a decent or even a good photo out of your crop. In addition, although I don't like teleconverters, it's, it is possible to put the Nikon AF-S TC 20E3 two times teleconverter on this lens and you can get right up close and take at least decent macro photos. So no doubt about it, uh, the Nikon 300 millimeter lens needs a lot of light because it's not the fastest lens at f4 uh, and it won't be useful in dim light. But it's a sharp lens, 
very sharp. It has nine blades, and for a telephoto, it has very close focus distance. Now let's look at the Voigtlander 90 millimeter macro lens, f3.5. It's an APO lens. I mean, it's apochromatically very corrected. It's also available relatively inexpensively compared to anything else in its class. This little gem of a lens is probably the least expensive top quality APO lens on the market for the value you get. It's an all metal lens and it's built like a tank. It is kind of smallish and it, and it, it includes a close up filter that screws on onto the hood of the lens. Now this is an odd shaped lens compared to most lenses, but the sharpness and the clarity are right up there with the best lenses. And here you can have APO correction at a price that anyone can afford. The SL-2 version, that's the most recent version of this lens, is fully metered to Nikon bodies. And it's, a, of course, a manual focus lens. It has a little 39 millimeter hood adapter that, that you can screw in. Uh, I mean, the whole lens is kind of very small. It, and this little adapter has a, like a tiny little lens cap. Um, otherwise, you can just um, forget about the close-up and the hood and treat it as any other 52 millimeter lens. Just get yourself a 52 millimeter rubber lens cap like the Nikon H2, you know, with a pinch type lens. And presto, you have a normal looking lens. So if you have a hankering for APO coloring, which I always do, uh, the same kind of color that you find in the Voigtlander CV125 and the Leica 100 millimeter APO Amara, which are four or five times more expensive than this lens. Here's a lens that you can get. It's a little slow and, and it requires a close-up lens to get to one-to-one, -to -one, but it's very sharp. It's really quite good APO, has nine aperture blades, um, and an ample focus throw of about 270 degrees, just barely makes it. Now let's talk about the Chiron, also called Lester A. Dean, D-I-N-E, 100 millimeter f2.8 macro. Now here's a, a workaround lens that can get you most of what you want at a reasonable price, because they turn up on eBay occasionally, uh, you know, for not a lot of money. This lens was produced by Chiron, or as I mentioned, also labeled Lester A. Dean. It's a, it's a quite sharp lens, and it's worth looking for, especially if you're on a budget. Now, there are many different lenses uh, in the 100 millimeter to 105 millimeter range produced by Chiron that are essentially the same lens. I mean, there's a lot of different versions of this lens. Uh, They've been issued not only under the Chiron and Lester Dean label, but also by Vivitar. And I've seen them on eBay for as little as 250 bucks. This lens goes to one to one, which is rare, and it has a 390 degree, which is pretty good focus throw. It was originally marketed mostly to dentists to take pictures of teeth, obviously. And this same lens has been advertised as a 2.5, F2.5, when sold by Elcar, E-L-C-A-R, and as 2.8 when sold by Casina, Panagor, Salagor, Vivitar, and Chiron. And, a, and again, it's sold to Dentist as a Lester A. Dean. The results with this lens are sharp, and you might want to put it on your shirt list if you want a solid macro lens and don't want to lay out the big bucks. It's going to do the job and you should be able to find one if you look for a while. So it's a fast lens, a sharp lens, has eight blades, reasonably close focus, good focus throw, and it goes to one to one. There, there's just something about Leica lenses that sets them apart in my eyes. And there are not too many of them that can be easily mounted on a Nikon. I have the 100 millimeter APO Elmar R and this 60 millimeter Leica macro uh, lens, f2.8. 
And although I have some of the best 60 millimeters available, I find myself using and loving this particular lens, even over lenses like the Coastal Optic 60 millimeter and the new Micro Nikkor 60 millimeter G lens. So that says something. Since it requires manual, manual aperture setting, this is a real pain. But I tend to use this lens fairly wide open, so usually I can set it at the actual aperture and I can still see through the camera viewfinder for stacking. This has turned out to be, for me, the wide angle macro of choice for my work. I had to have this lens converted to Nikon F mount, but once that was done, it was smooth sailing. Of course, it's manual focus and there are no electrical connections. Uh, it's all set by hand. This is just a lovely lens, a lovely image. It's not too expensive and it can be easily converted for Nikon by outside services or just by yourself. I did one of my lenses myself. You can add an extension tube of about 30 millimeters that will bring this lens to one to one. But I have those uh, tubes, but I haven't tried it yet. So what a great lens. So there you have a, a rough introduction to some of the macro lenses and close-up lenses that are out there that you might want to look into. There's a whole other class of lenses that I won't go into now because I still am working on them, but I hope to do a video on them pretty soon. And those would be all of the industrial lenses, all of the bellows and scanner lenses, some very, very uh, expensive, but also very, very sharp. Uh, lenses and some of them are super APO, super color corrected. Uh, these are specialty lenses. They don't go to infinity, they don't have regular mounts, but they're fascinating. So I'll try to do a video in the future, but good luck with finding the lens that you want.